everyone. Uh, thank you for taking a look at my channel. Uh, before we get started, I just want everybody to remember to take a look at my new comic, Forerunners, by my company Zion Comics on Indiegogo now. Uh, click on the link below. So I wanted to talk about pacing today with the Loki show. And because I feel like when I watch it, they go at breakneck speeds during the show. A lot of stuff happens in the show until I get to the end and I'm like, nothing really occurred. It's like they did a lot of things, but nothing really advanced the story. So I wanted to examine that and why that is. And I think it has to do with them wanting to end on cliffhangers. It's like they really want to end each episode on a cliffhanger, so they surround all all that cliffhanger with 45 minutes of fluff. Uh, so I just wanted to examine that today. So episode one, I think, is probably the best episode uh, so far. Focus us on exposition and the good hook at the end. Yeah, that's the one time that the cliffhanger does work, uh, just because... You know, we're just trying to still figure out what's going on in that world. Um, the one thing I don't feel like fits is they spent a lot of that, the the later half of the show, trying to get him to uh, reform by showing his deeds in the Avengers series. Uh, you know, Losing his home world, losing his mom, losing his own life, and then that was supposed to change him. Where in the end he still wants to go uh, beat up the timekeepers and take their place, so they might as well might as well could have just said to him, "Hey, if you help us out, uh, we'll let you go, or we'll let you meet the timekeepers, whatever." And that could have been his secret plan, and it would have been fine. Nothing would have really changed throughout the whole show. Uh, episode two is a little bit of a weaker episode. Uh, I think that they didn't need to start off at the Renaissance Fair where Enchantress or female Loki, I think she's going to be Enchantress, goes and beats up those guards and then takes that one guard as a hostage or kidnaps her for information. They really did not need to show that, I don't think. it was a They wanted to get some combat in there, but it just kind of ate up time. They could have just started off with the Loki, Loki's team going in there and seeing the damage of what occurred and then starting from there. Uh, the rest of the episode, I felt like they meandered a bit. You know, They had the jet ski talk, which I think that they could have put in episode one to, you know, they could have took that bonding time. They could have had the exposition and everything in episode one and then got to the action in episode two. Uh, but the rest of the time they spent the 35 or the 45 minutes just trying to investigate on where she was at. The idea was cool that you know, she spends her time in places that are about to go extinct. Because it won't, it won't show up on their radar. That's a, that's a good idea. They just don't need to spend 35 minutes on it. Episode two, you know, they had the cliffhanger. Loki follows Enchantress into the portal. And you're like, oh, has he, is he going to team up with her? Is he going to actually go after her and still help Time Patrol? Episode 3 probably suffers the worst. As instead of getting anything done, they st spend the entire episode on Loki and Enchantress trying to get to know each other. It just eats up all the time. Like I realize that they need to become buddies or whatever. If that's where they're going to in this series, I would have preferred if they would have, you know, had some goals. Spend like two or three, spend two or three episodes together getting to know each other, but actually have them do things that help follow the plot. Maybe of them getting home, because I have a feeling that. They didn't get home in this episode, but then something is going to happen in the next episode, and they're actually going to get off planet, and it's going to go back to them fighting the time patrol. And I'm like, you know, 
he spent episode three was just kind of boring. And then I, I know this really doesn't have to do with pacing, but I do think it's weird in that the whole train scene it just seems awful. Uh, one female Loki tell or sorry enchantress says to Loki. I'm not gonna fall asleep on the train. I'm, 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 I don't trust it or something like that. And she falls asleep. She did the exact same thing. She said she wasn't gonna do. Uh, and then Loki, who is very knowledgeable, you know, he he's a planner. The only time, the only reason why he loses is he's a typical bad guy, underestimates the good guys. But he plans, and you know, he he has good ideas. Is just gonna suddenly drop his disguise to party and drink seems dumb yeah, they did that just to get him off the train so other stuff happens it's just a sign of poor writing but like to circle back around like I said I think the su show suffers due to wanting to hint in the episodes on cliffhangers episode 3 cliffhanger they're trying to get back on that rocket it blows up they're not going to be able to get off planet before it, before it blows up. So if you want to do cliffhangers, you need to either have short episodes that go at breakneck speed. And a good example of this is the old Batman 66 show. Or Because if you end every, if you end every show on a cliffhanger, when it gets boring, you just say, okay, what's the next cliffhanger? If you fill the rest of the episode with fluff just to get to that cliffhanger, it makes your episodes boring. And if your episodes are boring, does it really matter if it ends on a cliffhanger if I don't care to see the next episode? But that's all I wanted to say for today. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.